Hi, it's Jack Sweeney. We're here with Sean Cracklauer of the Hackett Group. And Sean, you're fond of uh, saying, when it comes to the finance function, you're fond of asking the question, have you made good use of the recession? What exactly are you asking there? What we really mean by that is in the recession, before the recession, basically, many companies were looking at, and finance executives were more involved with either system implementations or looking at ways to accelerate the close or ways to uh, cut down on the number of controls they were using within their control environment and their internal audit staff. What we, but that really doesn't get to the heart of the matter in terms of where the real cost and effectiveness gains can be for the organization, which is more in the FP&A suite, in particular around financial planning and analysis, um, restructuring the way that that work is done, where resources are located, and in many cases looking at a demand management strategies in terms of how do we get the business to pare down the number of metrics, measures, the data that they use to something that's more targeted towards the say five or seven key metrics that the at the corporate level is used and then cascading those metrics down and then taking another look at the types of reporting and analysis that's done out in the field. Uh, in our mind that before the recession that was kind of off limits to a lot of companies. Once the recession hit it was like we need to get cost reductions out anywhere we can and we've got to get more proactive in kind of the way that we manage our strategy uh, and get more targeted in terms of the types of analyses we do and, and make decisions quicker. So it's given the, the CFOs that, uh, that we've talked to more of a, uh, a right to go in and redesign some processes that before have been off limits. All right. Yeah. Organizationally, when you were uh, doing the benchmarking study, I think one of the things that revealed is a sort of a dilemma, perhaps, at what you refer to as the autonomy trap. What, what exactly is the autonomy trap? Yeah, so the autonomy yeah. trap is related again to you know, what we mentioned earlier around don't waste a good recession or don't let a good recession go to waste, I should say, where in many cases executives were, uh, finance executives, when either you were entering a new market or you had country level sales offices we're making the assumption or being asked to provide kind of a whole complement of finance staff, whether it be controllers, uh, internal audit staff, uh, to uh, accountants, uh, project accountants, cost controllers, you know, that sort of thing. And really what we've said is, rather than falling into that trap of, for the business, it's good to have high autonomy in most cases and some level of customization in terms of how they serve their customers in those diverse markets it's not as good for a low-cost, highly effective finance organization to design the same way to say, we're going to put the same types of finance staff and resource loads in those individual countries as opposed to using more shared services, centers of excellence, or at least hubbing between different companies, different plants, whatever it may be to run a more efficient shop and hopefully run with greater levels of standardization. You're not advocating a geographic uh, CFO or, or what have no. No, yeah. no, but the, the issue is is that although uh, you think of it more in the matrix reporting, where usually those finance resources that are at either a, a country, a region, or a business unit level may report into a business unit country region CFO, who then reports up to the corporate CFO, and most of the decisions that are made are made for optimizing what works for that business. As far as leading finance organizations go, what are some of the perhaps metrics that you see they have adopted these types of metrics? What are being used out in the field in different geographies that perhaps other organizations or the lagging organizations haven't yet adopted? So some of the, or some of the, the differences would be things around um, doing 360 or, or continuous customer satisfaction surveys. Many finance organizations you know, get the input of the direct line manager they're working for as opposed to trying to get a cross-business view of how finance is perceived by the business as well as what services are working well, which ones aren't, uh, where is the value in terms of what would the business like you to work more on versus work less on. You see world-class organizations much more um, kind of baking into their enterprise performance management capability, something around that customer satisfaction and ongoing kind of measurement of how they're performing versus the peer group typically does not. Uh, in addition to that, if you look at the types of uh, other metrics that world-class organizations or leading organizations look at, uh, they typically look at in the FP&A, uh, one of the leading metrics is the percent of the time they spend collecting and compiling uh, information for a report, you know, a, a financial statement, whatever it may be, versus the analysis of that information and, and turning that into true recommendations uh, of where the business should go. So you, you see a split of it, and, and actually in, in true leading companies, it's about 30% of the time on spending uh, their time collecting and compiling the rest of the analysis 
for the peer group, it's actually flipped, where about 30% of their time is spent on the analysis, 70% is spent on collecting and compiling. Yep. Sean, you're uh, fond of talking about data standardization, uh, governance. What, what exactly, uh, give us some details behind your new thinking in that area. Well, it's, it's not necessarily new thinking. I think it's just it's become even increasingly important. Uh, if you look at Hackett conducts surveys uh, once a year on kind of key issues and where, where our client base is going. And for this year, at the end of 2009 going to 2010, we asked executives where were they going to focus. And the number one issue for finance executives was around better forecasting accuracy. And number three issue was around getting to the so what. So don't give me the 30, 50 pages of analysis, get me down to the three to five pages that really make a difference in terms of guiding the business. Now in order to do that, you've got to have good data standards around what, what are the actual metrics that we want to track, the underlying standards around how do I understand what source system are they coming from, uh, how am I transforming those, how do I make sure that, that that data is presented in the right way, I've got the right level of detail really add value to the analysis. So it's not so much data governance hasn't been there, it's expanding out the data set, it's expanding out the types of tools that they come from, and it's also putting in place a more rigorous process for how they uh, ensure that that data is quality and, and something that they can use across the enterprise. Sean, thanks for joining us. Thank you.